A number of unexplained V-shaped lanterns emerged in the sky over Phoenix on March 13, 1997, covering Sonora, Arizona, Nevada, and Mexico. This event is also called as, Lights Over Phoenix. More than a thousand people witnessed the sight within three hours, which spanned a radius of around 480 kilometers outside of Tucson and crossed multiple Nevada state boundaries. On March 12, the chain of events begins. A Cessna had narrowly missed a flying object, according to a dispatch from Prescott Valley Airport at Luke Air Force Base in Phoenix at 8.32 p.m., the day before 11. They sent two F-15s to test it, and one of the pilots reported he was scared when he saw V-shaped lights in the sky. The Air Force, on the other hand, eventually denied that such an occurrence had happened. The initial call came in on March 13 at 8.16 p.m., according to the U.S. National UFO Reporting Center. That came from a retired Paulden, Arizona police officer. In the sky, he noticed a swarm of red or orange lights. Four lights were observed together, with a fifth light following them. It had a V shape to it. Later, they reported they started getting a lot more calls south of Paulden. There were five lights at first, but by 10 p.m., there were nine. There have been over 700 calls received. A well-known movie star, claims to have witnessed the occurrence as a pilot. If his tale is true, he may have been the first person to officially document the sighting by reporting the lights to the control tower at Phoenix Sky Harbor International Airport. The event was being covered by multiple television stations at the time, including CBS Channel 5 News, MSNBC News, and Fox News Channel 10, and the number of eyewitnesses was startling. One of them, technician Dana Valentine, claimed that despite seeing the approximate shape of an object behind the light, it did not appear to be substantial. That is, he believed it had some invisibility. Meanwhile, according to an article in the Daily USA Today, some air traffic controllers saw the occurrence with their own eyes but did not see anything on the radar. The lights were thought to be coming from a single big spacecraft, according to witnesses. The spacecraft, according to the earliest believers, was large, quiet, slow-moving, and moved from time to time. Some said they were separate vessels. Computer examination of the incident's camera footage found that the lights must have been around 6,000 feet long, which supports this theory. Sue Watson, a witness, compared the ship's size to what appeared to be a shopping mall floating above her home. It appeared to her to be a totally round boomerang form. The truck driver who spotted the Phoenix lights, Bill Greiner, said he saw two lights shooting through the sky. He witnessed one of them flying over an air base before being pursued by two F-16 fighter jets. The crucial thing to remember is that this individual is not a believer in unexplained flying objects. Nonetheless, he stated what he saw in a responsible manner. The Air Force, on the other hand, has remained silent on the subject. Meanwhile, Rather of being astonished and wanting to talk about what they saw right away, some witnesses who witnessed the episode claim being in a temporary trance or hypnosis. That is, some persons who witnessed the mysterious revelation sat silently and, surprise, did not discuss it later. They then went back to their work. A spectral study of images and videos of the Phoenix lights, according to Jim Deledoso, an analyst on unexplained flying objects, proved that the light in them could not be created by a man-made source. Spectroscopic experts, on the other hand, have stated that his claims are not scientifically valid. Meanwhile, it has been reported in a number of places that the Air Force is aware of the situation, but they appear to be keeping quiet about it. As a result, many individuals believe the Air Force is attempting to conceal the facts about the incident. As a result, the Air Force explained what had happened. The LUU-2B-B was announced. The LUU-2B-B flame is a long-burning flame used in rescue and other missions. A set of LUU-2B-B flares were dropped from 4A-10 Warthog aircraft during a training exercise at the Barry Goldwater Range in western Pima County, according to the report. That, 
they claimed, was the explanation for the strange revelation. In a press conference in March 2007, Lieutenant Colonel Ed Jones, a pilot of the Maryland Air National Guard, said four planes with minor flames had flown that night. That night, he was a member of the squadron that was training. Many, however, believed that this explanation presented by the Air Force had severe problems. Many people were initially perplexed as to how the flames could produce such a precise V-shape. The absence of clouds of smoke, which are usually apparent during such a display of light, was another anomaly. Another key element to remember is that these flames have no other function but to emit light and drop. That is to say, despite the fact that thousands of individuals were observed flying V-shaped lights above their homes, the inability of these flames to do so was considered as the military's largest failing. However, 25 years later, there is still much discussion about what the gigantic Phoenix lights were that were saw by over a thousand witnesses. The following two theories come from the analysis of various forms of material linked to this incident. Number 1. The Phoenix lights should be the flames that are set off during a high-altitude flight training practice. The logical data, on the other hand, shows that some people feel the phoenix resembles light and flames. They made the official statement to Barry M. of the United States Air Force in Gila Bend, Arizona. According to the Goldwater Air Force, flames engulfed the mountain range. However, the Tucson Air Force Base, which is in charge of the claimed lights, initially stated that no planes were flying during the phoenix eclipse. Later, this statement was changed. Number 2. Phoenix lights are not light flames. It's possible that they're unidentified flying objects. A National Guard flare demonstration was held three years after the launch of Phoenix to simulate the occurrence. However, people of Phoenix who witnessed it remarked it was nothing like the city's lights. They had pointed out that these flames were merely burning and moving wildly, unlike the ones they had witnessed in 1997. Jim Diletoso, a special effects expert, claims he and his team were unable to come up with a definitive explanation for the video study of the Phoenix lights. Lasers, flames, holograms, and aeroplane lights, they feel, are not to blame. Finally, it can be claimed that the supernatural phenomena of light has gone down in history as an unsolved mystery. Many individuals believe this will remain that way.